According to a Parliamentary Standing Committee report, India's Next Generation Main Battle Tank project has cleared the technology demonstration phase. The RDO's Combat Vehicles Research and Development Establishment had started work on design configuration of Next Generation Main Battle Tank for future combat in 2017, that took into account the broad parameters like number of crew, weight of the platform, armament system, survivability, operating range transportability, tactical mobility, intelligence surveillance target acquisition and reconnaissance capability, as well as system modularity and theater of operation. The DRDO also conducted a study and compared present and futuristic gun systems including conventional gun system, electrothermal chemical gun, and liquid propellant gun, to predict the possible futuristic development trend. For next-generation armored fighting vehicles, the DRDO has been exploring hybrid electric vehicle design, that will provide extended range and higher electrical power availability as well as silent operation. The committee report also said, that the indigenous high-endurance autonomous underwater vehicle has also cleared the technology demonstration phase, and the Indian Navy has already released two requests for information procuring two new types of underwater vessels, which includes eight high-endurance autonomous underwater vehicles for anti-submarine warfare mine countermeasures and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operations, and twelve unmanned surface vessel for anti-submarine warfare mine countermeasures and force protection operations. After the recent fake news by a South Korean media website, that Korean FA-50 and Chinese JF-17 are the final contenders in Malaysian combat aircraft program, the Korean media has again started a fake news campaign to target Indian-built defense products. Korean Aerospace Industries had recently entered an agreement with Boeing to resume the production of fuselages of Apache helicopters in South Korea, after which a Korean media report claimed that Boeing is not happy with the quality of the Apache helicopter fuselages and secondary structures that were built by the Tata Boeing Aerospace Limited in India. Boeing has now released a press release stating that both Tata Boeing Aerospace Limited and Korean Aerospace Industries will continue to produce the fuselages, and the Korean production line will be restarted due to the additional 36 Apache helicopter order by the South Korean Army, while the fuselages supplied by the Tata Boeing Aerospace Limited will be used to manufacture the first six Apache helicopters for the Indian Army, that will be delivered in 2023. Officials have said, that the S-400 system that is set for delivery to India in November 2021, is currently undergoing various trials in Russia, and the trials include high dust and extreme weather withstanding capabilities to suit the Indian demands of operating in the plains deserts and mountainous terrain. The team of over 100 Indian Air Force personnel are undergoing training by a joint team from the Russian military and Almazanti which is the manufacturer of the S-400 system. A Russian analyst has said, that China is unhappy and has objections to Russia supplying S-400 system to India, but Russia has made it clear that Russia's relationship with India is unshakable, and Russia will not allow itself to be dictated by another country on issues that are of its major interest. The U.S. Air Force's Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategy Integration and Requirements Lieutenant General Clinton Inouye has said, that the U.S. Air Force plans to retire its entire stock of Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptors by 2030 time frame, and they will be replaced by the Next Generation Air Dominance Program. Smaller number of units, high cost of operation, and increasingly advanced enemy air defenses, as well as problems with supply of spare parts due to the disappearance of original equipment manufacturers, are the issues which are pushing the Raptors towards retirement, and despite their costing $678 million per unit, the Raptors have never accomplished their primary mission of downing an enemy fighter jet in combat. Russian media has reported, 
that Indian Navy pilots have already conducted over 1,500 carrier landings on INS Vikramaditya using the Russian-developed resistory landing system, and it has also been installed on the second carrier INS Vikrant. After success of the resistor landing system on Indian Navy carriers, the Russian Navy has also decided to equip its aircraft carrier with the same precision approach system. A military expert has said that Russia develops defense systems for foreign customers and then inducts it in the Russian armed forces, and he advised for leveraging Russia's funding limitations through the co-development of advanced defense systems with India. Oh, Mark,